you know, we all want the power to change ourselves, right? That's why self-help books do so well. Yeah. But you can't begin to change yourself in any meaningful way until you confront who you really are. I want you in this book, I'm holding up a mirror to you. I'm holding up a mirror to your self-absorption, to your narcissism. I say we're all narcissists. Yeah. To your aggressive tendencies, to the envy that you feel, to all of that stuff. You can't, you know, if you go out in public and you don't look in a mirror, your hair will, you'll, you're gonna look really weird, yeah. right? <laughs> You can't begin to like improve your looks until you look in the mirror. You can't begin to change yourself until you look into that mirror of who you really are. All that other stuff that you don't want to confront. And I'm like giving you a big punch in the face, like a Mike Tyson punch <laughs> right. of here's, this is who you are. You do have these tendencies. I want to make you be much more tolerant of people around you yeah. and not so judgmental. I want you to approach even the people that you don't like that repel you with a degree of empathy and even love that you want to understand them. Yeah. People are so quick to judge and I want you to step back and instead of trying to judge and categorize people, understand who they are, get into their soul, their psyche. But you need to do the same for yourself. You need to accept the fact that you are an animal, that you were descended from primates, that you have emotions you can't control and there's nothing bad in it stop even judging yourself yeah. but accept that you have these qualities and once you accept that you are a narcissist and it's not a negative thing because practically everybody out there is self-absorbed particularly yeah. these days once you come to terms with that then you can begin to change it but hating yourself and beating up yourself is not going to lead to any kind of meaningful change yeah well the problem is you're in your day-to-day -day interactions at the office for instance you're not paying attention to that colleague yeah you're tuning them out because <clears throat> you're more interested in your own problems and your own ideas your own you've got your own life to lead and so you're, you're sitting there in a conversation but you're not listening to them you're just you have that internal monologue that's playing so step number one is to be aware that you're continually listening to a voice in your head and that voice is really really damaging you yeah. it's it's blocking you from experiencing the world and from experiencing other people so i'm not asking for radical change in your life you're not overnight going to become this this incredible empathic visionary person i want baby steps if you've ever experienced a moment in your life where you were doing sports or exercise or you were reading a book or you were writing something or you're seeing a movie getting outside of yourself and being at one with what you're doing is incredibly therapeutic it's a flow state for the example. flow state yeah and this is a flow state that you're gonna have in your boring daily social interaction so if you have a negative kind of hostile closed restricted attitude towards life that voice is always going to be critical about you and about other people. And being critical about you and other people is narrowing the lens of your eye. I say your attitude towards life is like an aperture of a camera, which is an apt uh, metaphor here. <laughs> yes, well played. And that aperture is closing dependent on how closed you are to experience. If you're fearful and avoidant and hostile, that thing can narrow down to a tiny, to the slowest f-stop that there is, right? Yeah. But if you're open and expansive and accepting and tolerant and kind of open to experience, it opens to the widest aperture. And you, how you look at yourself and how that attitude is, will determine what you get in life. Well, the key thing is, it goes back to our nature and how we evolve as, as conscious animals. The key thing is there's an animal part of our nature, which is we completely take appearances for reality. That's sort of the source of our problems and our misery, to be honest with in life. So the front that people present, the way they look, the way they talk to us, their words, we sort of take at face value. And although we might think, you know, I do a lot of consulting work. I've been doing it for over 20 years now. The number one problem I deal with is I hired the worst person in the world and they're making my life hell right and why did you hire the wrong person because you judged them on their charming smiles their appearance their, their smooth talk their resume which you can conceal a lot your resume you didn't look behind the facade and look at what's underneath the character so this is kind of ingrained in our nature it goes back thousands and thousands of years so some things are hard to put into words which is why i struggle so much with my books um because a lot of human communication i estimated 95 percent it's just a number is non right so we don't pay much attention to that because we're so word oriented right we're so embedded in language that we think everything in terms of what people say but unconsciously without even realizing it we're continually judging people on their nonverbal behavior the ability to detach yourself from uh, your own emotions is extremely important in life it doesn't mean that you become a cold rational person at all i don't believe in that at all emotions are extremely important for us it's what makes us creative it what feeds our imagination gives us drive but the ability that you can gain over 
over your life in this instant and in every other instant to have a degree of a detachment, not a, only a matter of degree, where you can stand back and you feel something very powerfully. You feel attracted to something or a person. You feel excited or repulsed. And to not react and to step back and analyze and go, why am I feeling this right now? Is it because of what somebody is saying right now? Or does it go deeper to that? Is it related to some other issue? That is a skill that is not easy, but you can develop it day by day by day, taking little steps. And so if you're able to slowly detach yourself from your day-to-day -day emotional reactions, it gives you a little bit of distance between you and your ego, right? So I meditate every morning. I've been doing it now for 11 years, for like 40, over 40 minutes. It's a ritual that if I don't do, I feel extremely depressed, something's wrong, okay? And when I'm meditating, I become deeply aware. These thoughts start coming up, they bubble up, you can't control them. Become deeply aware of your ego, of certain patterns in your thinking, of certain anxieties, certain kind of neurotic thought patterns, right? You're seeing it before your eyes. It's floating there. This is your ego, Robert. It's going here, there, and there. You can see it. And now when you're in that state, you can almost see it as if it's another person. And it's very powerful and it's very liberating. Now, in the case of someone who's dealing with a deep wound, I don't know if you can go, you can't go there like tomorrow. And do so. Your tendency will be when you're a child, when you're five or six, to kind of know that you like this. You like sports, you like, you like music, you like words, or you like working with yeah. You have a feel for it. It's natural. And as you get older, you start to listen to other people um, and you lose a sense of who you are. You listen to your parents who tell you, Brendan, you got to become a lawyer. You need to go to see your other, your friends are all scrambling to make a lot of money. And you lose this connection to who you are, to what your strengths are, to what you love. And the whole thing about learning is learning has to be fun. You have to realize the worst thing is take everything personally and get emotional. So people who are psychotic bosses, their power is in grabbing your emotion and entangling you in, in a drama. They're better at it. They're more aggressive. They're nastier. They're more difficult. They're more amoral than you are. You're never going to playing to their state. They thrive on, on, on making emotion. And so you have to learn in general in life. Stop taking things. so emotional. Not everything. I do want you to fall in love and have a family of your children. But in the work world, hey, you cool things down and not real, realize that it never hurts, etc. When you fall for the myth, when you start real, thinking that they're greater than they are, when you start trembling, when your bowels start moving from fear, you're in their grasp. When you're reasonably calm, you maintain your present mind. You see them as a little baby throwing a tantrum uh, or whatever it is. You've got control and you have options. Definitely social media is a magnet for the dark side of human nature yeah. because you, you can be anonymous, yeah. because you can say things, you can be mean, you can say really nasty stuff yeah. and you can get away with it. No police officer is going to come knocking on your door. Nobody knows who you are. You can pretend you're the most macho, angry, violent person. But in fact, you're, in real life, you're probably this meek, timid little person. Yes. Black trolls are actually yeah. trying to get out, pretend that there's something that they're not. We are social animals to the core. That's who we are. We don't have, we don't really even exist. Think of yourself as an individual that's not really existing. You, who you are now, is a composite of all the influences in your life, of your parents, your teachers, your friends, your colleagues, your boss. You are a social animal. You only exist in relation to other people. And the problem that a lot of people have now is they're divorced from that. They live in their little bubble. We live in very narcissistic times where people are continually self-absorbed. So the loss of human nature is about getting outside of yourself. Stop being so self-absorbed. Stop thinking that the world revolves only around you. Stop thinking that your problems are the only, that you're the only person that's facing mortality that has going to die. Everybody's going to die in this and it's a terrible moment for everybody. You are not alone. We're all connected, but you're continually acting in life. You're never, you're never being exactly honest. You don't, when you talk to your, your wife or your, or your um, children, you talk in a different way than you do to your boss. You suddenly put on a different persona. What does that say about you? In the course of a day, when you're dealing with maybe 20 different people from different walks of life, you're acting differently depending on who you're with. So you are an actor and just admit it. Admit, don't think that everything you do is this comes from some great authentic part of yourself. Being a human being means continually performing, right? And some people are good performers and some people are not good performers. And there's no fault problem with that. But why there should be this negative concept of, oh, you're acting or you're performing, you're not being yourself.